and we're live. Welcome to Fall Forward Radio. Like that. There he is, my man. What's going on? I feel like I haven't seen you in weeks. Yep, big, big, big week. Moved, yeah. uh, got that finished up, and uh, here we are. Yeah, we took a week off, Fall Forward Fanatics. Hope you don't mind. Jay was moving. I helped him move, which was super fun. It was great. Mm-hmm. We got a truck, threw everything in there. And, uh, and uh, do you tell him the lizard story? Yeah, no, but pretty funny story. We're moving a couch. Found a lizard, jumped on it. Uh, we tried to shoot it away. The lizard jumped into a corner. Rob and I kind of looked at each other. There's nothing we could do. A <laughs> couple of days later, my wife uh, came out of the house screaming that there was a, a random lizard running around the house. Because <laughs> <laughs> he called me. He called me and he said, "Hey, remember that lizard?" Because we looked at each other as if to say, well, yeah, "What are we gonna do?" Well, let's see what happens. What happens? And then, sure enough, it was almost like a perfect prank that we uh, <laughs> we decided. So. So how's the kids? So we, me and Jay, just so you guys know, we made a unified decision because we do everything together now. We mm-hmm. decided to send our kids back to brick and mortar in school because they were both suffering. They were doing really good at school online, but they need yeah. to be with their friends. So today was the first day. How did, uh, how did your boy get on? Uh, they, they had a great time. They're ready to go back for more. But you know, I think the more important aspect of that too is uh, both of us contacted the school's janitorial leads. Yeah. We spoke to them. And I, I tell you what, I was shocked and surprise in what depths they go into yeah. in as far as understanding what they're putting down from the disinfectants, the chemicals that are in them, Absolutely. what they use in the cafeteria versus what they use out in the playground blew yeah. my mind, made me feel so much more comfortable. I, I say to everybody out there, parents too, if you're unsure about sending your child back to school in this time, definitely get a hold of somebody at school that understands how they're handling their protocols cleaning wise and talk to them. Yeah. There you go. There's, there's Jay Hawk's advice. I think. So yeah, no, she had a great time as well. So I'm happy. I think uh, most parents, when their kids leave the house, they just sigh of relief, and then they actually don't know what to do with themselves because it's like you know they're so used to having their kids there. So what they do now is they do the house cleaning and listen to Full Forward Radio, right? That's right. There That's you go. Right. And then so, we're here now. We get to ramp up the amount of episodes. Oh, it's, it's, so we've we got, go. we got some exciting things coming up. So talking of dads, talking of two super dads over here, we have an amazing guy on the show today. Just yep. his name is Robert Selby. Um, he was actually on the Apple TV show dads. Just with a say, whole yeah, bunch. bit of a superstar in his own right. We got a celebrity. We got our That's first right. TV celebrity. Movie star. Yeah, I know. So um, we got, of course, as always, we haven't had it in the last couple of episodes. We've got a, a, a tape. We, I love it when we say roll the tape. We sound so <laughs> old. Roll the MP3. So yeah, we're going to show you a little <laughs> bit about that. And then uh, we'll get into the interview with Robert and uh, we'll catch you after the interview. So Jay, All right, without thanks. further ado, go ahead and roll, roll the tape. tape. <laughs> RJ has CHD, that stands for congenital heart defect. What does that mean? So Chase Elijah Selby was born the 27th of October, 2013. He weighed in at five pounds, two ounces, 13 inches. He was born 8.01 a.m. And that was one, if not the most exciting and proud day of my life. Ah, let's go ahead and tie your shoe, man. I love you. You love me? Yeah, I want to be just like you. You want to be just like me? Yes. Let me tell you something. Okay. You will never be like me. And the reason why you will never be like me, because I want to allow you to be like me. Because I'm molding you, I'm shaping you, and I'm preparing you to be better than you. Because if I allow you to have the same upbringing as I did, then I feel you as a father. And that's one thing that I would not allow, is for me to feel you as a father. Do you understand me? Yes. All right, three times. Let's go play. Okay. When you're expecting a child, they never prepare for the what ifs. He had two holes in his heart. I'm forever gonna be his protector. You see, he came from a real, real uphill battle to what you got now current. He's just a loving, energetic, bright, smart, 
intelligent, funny, crazy, adorable, cute, wild kid, man. Like, you know, I can't explain it, man. But, you know, he, he is my everything. This time. What up, what up, what up to my teen chases out there? Yeah, what up, what up to my teen chases out there? That's what's up, that's what's up. So, on today's agenda, what we got going Daddy, on? Yes, Audrey? I love you all on my dick's heart. Oh, you do? Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, wow, wow. Ooh. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm crying. Um, <laughs> wow. Well, what did you think about that video, Jay? Excellent, excellent. We got the man here himself, Robert oh, yeah. Selby. Good to see you, Robert. Thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. We're so excited to have you on there. We were Super just talking dad. before the interview, and uh, I finished watching the show, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, and I, I messaged you straight away, and then I was, I was crying myself to sleep every night because I didn't hear from you. And then <laughs> out the blue, I was out with my daughter, and there, there you were. You messaged me. I jumped up. I left her at practice and I called Jay and I was like, we got him, we got him. we got him on the show now. So we are yeah. super excited to have you, man. It's really, really great to have you on the show. So, um, so what we wanted to do is, you know, obviously you're a star, you're a movie star. You're our first celebrity on the show. That's right. Uh, in, the, in the Apple TV show, dads, you're a super dad motivated. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Rob, Robert. Sorry, Robert. Uh, Robert, <laughs> Robert. Yeah. Don't get a confuser. Yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you again for having me, guys. Um, Absolutely. A little bit about me is um, I'm a full-time dad, as y'all saw in the movie. Um, I got a wonderful, excellent, awesome son, man. I couldn't ask for a better son than him. So that's why I only got one because I wanted to <laughs> have a competition. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm a full-time dad. That you know, take care of my son. We do all type of adventurous things. And, you know, he got like a little health condition that, you know, we tackled and stuff like that. That's roughly basically about me. Like I'm always loving, I'm caring, I'm always happy and stuff like that. You know, I'm just trying to take on the world as much as possible and stuff like that. And the feedback has been awesome. So that's roughly just me in a nutshell. Full-time dad, active dad, loving dad, and just all I do is work. So pretty much that's the basic about it. Yeah, man, your, your story is incredible. Uh, you know, and Rob contacted me and shared with me the story, the, the show and the, the dad's show is just out of this world. You know, for our viewers, would you mind just kind of giving a quick overview of what, you know, your son's gone through and a little bit about the journey so far? Okay, yeah. So my, my son was born in 2013 and the day they were leaving the hospital, one of the nurses decided to do a follow-up from the previous nurse with a shift change and she heard they had a heart murmur. So she said that um, normally most kids have heart murmurs, some severe, some not. And so she asked us, could we have like a test done just to make sure, you know, everything's okay before we leave. Um, 30 minutes later, she come back, told us that our son wasn't good at all or whatever. He had multiple holes in his heart. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they wanted um, our son to at least be like 10 months or 10 pounds for his first open heart surgery. And he was out of the hospital all but like two weeks before I had to actually rush him to the hospital in um, Washington, D.C., where he only was supposed to stay there for maybe like a week. He wound up staying there for like two months for other complications and stuff like wow. that. So it was just one thing after another. But with a lot of help from like the nurses and doctors and community and stuff like that, he's been thriving on all cylinders, been knocking down all his barriers and stuff like that. So to That's me, great. the sky's the limit. And you know, when people look at him and see how active he is, they never think that he went through so much as, you know, a baby. It was just like setback at the setback at the setback to now he's about to be seven years old. And they're like, now I can't see that he went through all these things and why does send his scars on his chest and his feet mm -hmm. and that he still has now. And they're like, what? And I got showing pictures in this breakdown crime, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, like, that's the same kid. I'm like, me either. Like, every day I wake <laughs> up, he just talking. I'm like, you know, why are you staring at me for? I'm like, I'm just, you know, amazed. Yeah. I'm just amazed, son. You just don't know. Like, I'm not trying to be creepy, son, but <laughs> you just don't know. I go from holding you in my hand to you hooked up with like a bunch of tubes in and out your mouth and out your body to just, you just rambling, 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 just talking, you know, talking me to death. And I'm just, excited you know so that's the seven-year-old right yeah right <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what i watched uh one, one of your youtube channels the most recent one you left on there the vlog of you running in washington dc yeah. 
and I saw Jason in the background and he's just running around and just kind of re maybe reminisce about my son at the time. And just, he looked, like you said, he looks just like a normal little, little guy running around having a time of his life with his dad. Yeah. Like kids, man, you know, they could bring out the most, you know, your inner strength that you never think that you actually have. And people always ask me that, how did, you know, how do I dealt with it or whatever? I'm like, honestly, I just do not know. I just looked at it it's like one day at a time yeah. then a blink of an eye is seven years later, you know? So, hey, I'm glad that we're here now. I'm glad that a lot of his complications are, you know, minimum now, but, you know, we still got other things that we got to worry about, but he's great though. That's great. You know, I was telling Rob too, real quick, uh, the picture of you and your son when you put the tube on you as well, the feeding tube, you're ripped, man. The six pack <laughs> out of this world. Kudos to you. I was telling Rob, if I had to do that at that time, it would be a keg more than a six pack. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Right. The you know what the thing was, Robert. Is you know, <clears throat> I watched the show, um, Dads. So I was someone. It was actually one of our previous. Um, guests on the show told us about uh, one of the other guests. Did you guys, did you end up, I mean, I'm going back and forth. Did you meet any of the other people on the show? Oh, uh, no, I haven't. But um, uh, one of the dads, Rob, the, uh, the farm couple, you know, um, right. they actually stayed probably like 30 minutes from me. So we all supposed to meet up, but you know, this COVID and they sure. are, they're also are busy too or whatever, but you know, hopefully we get to meet up, meet up with them in you know, the near future. So it's so funny you should say that because that was who she recommended to us that 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 uh, that couple with the kid with the foster kids and what they're doing. So you know, I was doing my research on them, and then obviously I was doing the research on you. So we're hopefully going to get them on the show at some stage as well. But going back to the beginning with uh, with Chase, you know, you talked about on the show because um, you and his mom are not together, correct? Right. So, but, and at the beginning it was kind of tough, right? Cause you were working so much that you weren't necessarily able to be around as much for him. Is that right? Yeah. Well, no, not really. Um, it was more of, um, me being a, I guess like a scared dad. Right. Thing, Cause once she told me that she was pregnant, you know, I just felt like my life ended like, Oh, I can't do this. And I can't, you know, like mm -hmm. you feel like you want to be always like the, the party boy or something like that all the time or whatever. And once she told me that, it just like, no, you know, a typical, you know, God is running away from his responsibilities and stuff like that. And what I commend her at is that she didn't listen to the outside world of, you know what, you know, take him through the court system, put him on papers, don't let him see his kids, you know, just be that typical, you know, um, bitter, hurt person or whatever. She was like, I'm always going to leave the door open for you if you should ever come back. And I'm like, I commend you for it and I thank you for it. So that's why like, we are best friends. Like I always give her the most praise. Like we talk every that's day, awesome. we're around each other. Yeah. So, you know, we always send each other text messages. So she is like by far one of my best friends. And just to have that open communication with her or whatever that she understood. And even her dad said at one point in time, cause she like, well, look what he texted me, dad. And he was like, well, you know, he's, if you tell me that y'all are best friends, y'all never argue, never had any issues, he'll come back around. Just give him a little bit more time or whatever. And so that's what she did. I came back around and I always told her, I'm like, if you ever give me a second chance, you will never regret it. And she never has, you know, like I told um, people who, who have saw the movie that, um, you know, I always commend her for that or whatever, stuff like that. And I always, that's why I think I, even as a dad, you know, you always want to be present for your child. Sure. But that's because, you know, he went through all the things that he went through and she gave me a second chance. I just felt like every day I just got to prove to her that what she allowed me to be in my son's life, she don't regret. And, right. you know, even though she told me like, oh, you made up for, you know, I'm like, no, every day I feel like it could be a day to be like, you know what? No, no, no. Even though she would never do that, but this is how I think this made me even just be more and more present, you know, for my son and, to be the role model that he needs in his life. Well, two things, man. Uh, I know I, I, I'm separated from my, uh, my daughter's mom. We split up about seven years ago. We're best friends as well. Yeah. And you know what, it's in this common day, it's very rare for people, you know, that have a child that are not together to get on so well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the fact that, you know, there's only one person that it affects and it's the child. And yeah. the thing is, is you have mature parents that understand that and they work together so that they bring their child up to be a good child from both sides. You know, don't knock the other parent. Don't say bad things about the other parent. You know, the same way you wouldn't do if you were married in a household is you don't, you don't tell your kids, 
you know, a fight that you have with your, with your spouse or your partner. So um, that's amazing. I mean, I, I commend both of you for that. And I hope when she sees this, I'm going to tell her, what's her name? Shante. Shante, great job. Great job. And I saw that, I saw that on the show as well. You could see that. So how old were, was Chase when you kind of came back into his life? Um, well, he was, he wasn't born. So oh, okay. I, so I think how they cut it in the movie and how I said it, cause I was like, I was gone for two months. They thought I was gone for like, cause everybody asked like, so you was gone for like two months of your life. I'm like, well, he wasn't born. I was gone for right. the pregnancy early in the pregnancy when she told me she was pregnant. So I was gone for maybe like two or three months and stuff like that. So I was there from the whole birth, leaving so from day one. Stuff, yeah, from day one or whatever and stuff like that. But I think how they edited it in the movie is like, I was gone for a while. Got <laughs> like, it, got well, it. Had to have, have to add a little drama in, right? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's great to clarify that, man. That, that really is. And, you know, I, I don't want to take up too much of, of Jay's time as well, but, you know, just looking at little Chase and what he's been through and some of the videos and stuff is, you know, I have a nine-year-old daughter um, and we're best friends. And the thing is, I look at you and Chase and I can see that you are buddies, you know, he looks up to you and, and you, you know, it's at the same time as people always say that kids look up to their parents, but you said something a little bit earlier that resonated with me is, you know, you sit there and stare at him and he's like, why are you staring at me? And I do the same thing. And I know Jay does with his kids as well as so we just yep. stare at our kids and we think, where is the time gone? You know, right. it's like my daughter. Well, I, just, I find today. them fascinating. They're just fascinating to watch. And like you said, if you're around and you're present, they catch what you're doing. You're the role model for them, that matter. You're guiding them. You're their shepherd. And yeah. uh, it's just fun to see some of your idiosyncrasies come out of them as well. So, Gee, that was a very big a, word. Hey, I'm <laughs> very here for you. Impressed. Very so impressed. Robert, I had a big question after the, I know Rob had kind of led into it about you doing the dad's movie. Um, saw in the news that Jimmy Kimmel's son had a similar uh, challenge as Chase's. I was just, just wondering if, uh, you know, if maybe you were able to reach out to him in some respect and kind of share any support he might need given yeah. that uh, you know, had, you were a little bit ahead of him and as far as the journey was concerned. Yeah, um, yes, when, um, when I actually saw that story broke like a few years ago and stuff like that, you know, I, of course, you know, I, I did reach out, but again, I'm little Robert or whatever, so I don't have like nobody in contact with his, you know, contact people or whatever, but you know, I did like the traditional emails and social media reach out and stuff like that. And then when the movie came along and I saw that he was in it, I'm like, hey, you know what? like. <laughs> I got a little bit of context now. Like, so like, can you reach out to him and let him know whatever, but I still haven't heard nothing back from him. But um, like one of our sayings in our, um, our models, like you never gonna fight alone. And like when I saw him break down and stuff, I'm like, you know, he don't know, but it is a big community right. out there with mm -hmm. people that have the heart condition and they helped me out so much. So I just knew that he was gonna be in good hands or whatever, because it's just so many people from strangers that would take care of and show you the ropes or whatever what you need to do to overcome these situations or whatever so eventually i'm like you know what he's in good hands i'm sorry that his child had to go through that because you never mm -hmm. prepare for it you know it just happen or whatever yeah. sometimes you catch it before you know the baby is born sometimes it could be like three or four years later like one of my good friends the same thing with her like she said she didn't find out that she had holes in her heart because she was three years old and she passed out on a um on a playground playing and, you know, they kept saying, like, she kept telling her mom about her heart. And they thought that, you know, it was, like, asthma-related. You kind of find out she had holes in her heart, so she had to have surgery at three years old. So it can get misdiagnosed all the time. I'm just glad that it caught our son, you know, yeah. um, with it earlier, you know. But, um, yeah, like I said, Jimmy Kimmel, he's awesome. He's great. Um, great dad. So, like I said, he's in good hands. Yeah. I can't, I can't get away from it before, Jay, because – one of the, on one of our last episodes, we actually got one of the comments in the, in the section that says, Hey, does anybody else that thinks Jay Hawk looks a little bit like Jimmy Kimmel? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, he does. Oh, he does. Yeah, yes. see? Oh, there we go. Yeah, see? He said, Just he call said, me JK from now on, not Jay oh, Hawk. <laughs> and we joked, we joked about it and we did a side by side in the last episode. So when he told me about that, I was like, wow, this is, you know, because he was, he said, I'm, I'm here to step in for Jimmy Kimmel if he, if he needs the help, you know? So that's what he's <laughs> hey, that It's not a bad pair of shoes to fill if you need to. Right. Right. <laughs> You know, what, you know, I was wondering too, Robert, does, how much does Chase remember? I obviously he's really young going through a lot of this. Um, does, does he have any recollection of, of obviously not everything, but does he understand what's going on and, and what's going on with everything that he, how he feels and so forth? Yes. Um, I try to teach him much as much as possible about his, um, his condition to let him know, you know, like 
um, like the reason why we call it, it's called a zipper too. So I'm like, yo, you mm-hmm. got a zipper because of this. And he had multiple heart surgery. So he's seen his pictures. He know he'd been in the hospital for a while or whatever. Um, again, he got a feeding tube. So he has to get hooked up to the machine you know, at nighttime and stuff like that. Um, Sometimes if he gets sick, you know, he got to you know, get hooked up to the machine because he's a little bit underweight as far as mm-hmm. like the doctor um, skill that goes or whatever, but um, he knows like a little bit, he'll know the severity of it or whatever, but again, I don't put no limitations on him. I just make sure he just, whatever he want to do, he want to play soccer now. So I'm like, okay, you know, let's sign him up for soccer. There you let's go, go same. Stuff like that. So when his doctor's like, oh, well, he runs a lot and I don't, you know, want it to, you know, have his heart rammed up, but now he just got no restrictions or whatever. So the doctor's like, whatever like just let him go just yeah, let him be, let him a, be a little boy so if something happens amazing. then we attack it so we know what his limits are and stuff like that but um yeah like i said he's you know as much as i told him or whatever and stuff like that but you know he's all he's all good like i said he know how to change his g-tube now so we've been uh-huh. working on that for the past you know a few weeks and stuff like that so his feeding tube comes out he know how to pop it back in because a lot of people that he be around when they see it they get scrimmish and um, screamish or whatever and be like, uh, no, I don't want to touch it if it pop out. And I'm like, well, I don't want to take him away to Washington, D.C. to get it put back in because <laughs> the whole the hole will close up at like five or ten minutes or whatever. So then you actually got to go to the hospital to get it reopened. That's a whole nother process. So I'm like, well, you know, y'all can just pop it right back in. So I said, you know what? They don't want to do it. Son, if it ever pop back out, you know how to put it back in and go about your day. So wow. uh, it was awesome commend him for that what a what a strong little guy so so two questions i mean look i guess i guess he's at the age now where he's used to it you know he's used to hooking himself up to the machine it's become i guess you know kids are so resilient that they you know in the end they just go okay it's part of my life and you know of course other kids are not going to notice what he's they're not going through the same thing and you know he has you in his life to explain to him you know that it's okay he's different but everyone's different and he survived so um i know you have a program the life of chase elijah so you do the YouTube stuff, um, and I know he's a so getting to become a social media superstar. So tell us a little bit about the life of Chase Elijah. What that, what kind of what you decided to do with that, and how, what was it based for? Okay. Um, so um, my earlier years, you know, I wanted to be a photographer. So um, and I started taking like a, you know, a bunch of pictures and stuff like that. Really wasn't too much good at it. It was just I turn a camera, put it on automatic, and have the camera come out, the camera, the pictures come out or whatever. And, um, you know, when he was born, you know, at that time, the one thing I kind of do regret is um, I didn't get a lot of videos of him for his birth. Then the hospital that we was at, they didn't really allow me to bring a camera inside because um, his mother um, got a C-section. So they'd be like, right. you know, for, um, for, I guess for like legal reasons or whatever, you know, you can't bring a camera in or whatever. So I really didn't get him like, screaming and crying but i got a few pictures of whatever they were allowed but um then after a while i just transitioned from you know pictures to videos because i always tell people like if you and jay i mean jay and rob if y'all take a picture together and if neither one of y'all are there to explain to the person like hey you know we was doing this at that picture we was we was at this place we were having so much fun to me as an um, average viewer, I'm just going to look, look at the picture, but, oh, okay, you know, just two guys just hanging on out or whatever, but it could have right. been moved to the picture. So I'm sure. like, you know what? I got a lot of pictures, but if I'm not there to tell the story, then what, you know, what impact would these pictures have? So I transitioned from that to actually just doing videos or whatever. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just do this as a digital diary for him. I'm like, you That's know what? Awesome. The, life, the life of my son or whatever. So you can see just like a movie, beginning, middle, and end. So you see like our days, how we started off, what we're doing throughout the day, then we how, how we end that day off. So when he goes back and, you know, look at some of the pictures with mom and dad and his cousin or whatever, you know, okay, I don't have to be there to explain it, but when he's there watching the videos, he's like, man, I was here, I was there, I was flying on a plane with dad for the first time, you know, we went out of the country, we did all these things, it's actually, you can actually visualize and see these things or whatever. So I wanted more to be a digital diary so that's why I started like the life, um, the life of Chase Elijah because it is about his life, you know, from birth till we're gonna keep going and going and going till I guess he'd be like, you know what, Dad, I'm done with it. So yeah, <laughs> it could be like he'd be 21 years old, I'm still gonna be having the camera, you know, 
you know, when he get married or whatever, still may have the camera like, you know, recording his life or whatever and stuff like that. But um, yeah. but then it transitioned to where, you know, he picks up the camera now and record me and um like maybe like a few days ago, I was just on his tablet and I was um looking at one of his games or whatever, trying to um install it. So whatever it, Whatever I did, I got curious. So I started going through some of his, uh, his his stuff or whatever, and I saw he took so many pictures of me. I'm like, yo, you sneaking pictures? Then he got like a bunch of videos, and he doing the same thing as me as when I vlog, how I start off my vlog, how I say certain things in the That's vlog, great. Or whatever. And he got me a couple of times driving. I didn't even know that he actually was recording me at all or whatever. So I'm like, like oh, father, he's... like son. See, like, right. right, right. So That's great. I like it and enjoy it. So roughly just a digital diary for his life and um all the stuff that he's been in been a part of and you know he just looked back on to like man i was in a movie i was on tv you know i was in a podcast dad was in a podcast i was on you know news channel all that stuff so you know it comes with fruition and stuff even the first day of school and stuff that's well, i imagine as as he gets older too having gone through this with you as a great shepherd through it all as well he'd be a great advocate for other children having gone through some of these steps and journeys as well so He's got, he's got a bright future ahead of him, I can imagine. Yeah, yes, he does. I appreciate it. I mean, I, I, look at, I look at Chase and, you know, as much as just seeing him on his videos and seeing how he is. And, you know, there's some videos in there that from a parent, you know, makes you emotional when he had to, he was crying and, he, you know, he didn't like having to go into hospital. And, and you know, you didn't, you didn't baby him. You know, you treated him like a, a young adult and, you know, you talked him through it. And, you know, when you see a child cry, your own child cry, it's the worst feeling on the entire planet. You can it either cry fall. with them or you can make them stronger in a better way. And you've done such an amazing job on that. So we have to commend you. And you know, all of our different podcast episodes are about different things. And you know, this one, as well as being, you know, about Chase and what he's gone through with his heart conditions is also about dads and their children and how they bring them up and how they, you know, they don't treat them just like a child, they treat them like a friend. And, you know, that's how we both work as well. So huge, I mean, just fantastic, man. We're, we're so, we're so proud to have you on here talking, you know, as the three cool dads on here, we're part of the crew. So um, one more thing I wanted to ask you before Jay uh, starts to wrap it up is how did it happen with um, the show? How did dads come about? How did you get contacted about it? Um, how did all of that come about? Um, well, probably in 2000, I want to say 2018, I think like June or July 2018, um, a lady, uh, I want to say Jennifer, yeah, I think Jennifer, she, um, she DM'd me on in Instagram saying like how uh, would I like to be a part of this documentary that they're putting together and you know the focus on dads and stuff like that so i'm like you know okay cool you know i have no no problem with that can you give me like a little bit more information so it went from the dm to um you know exchanging emails and stuff like that and you know as we you know talked a little bit through the emails you know maybe like two three four months went past or whatever and um we did like a, a skype interview so they were like you know would you like to we would like to talk to you for maybe like 20 30 minutes for a Skype interview to see if, you know, you fit, you know, our, um, I guess what they look for, for us, you know, being a dad and being on a documentary. I said, oh, no problem or whatever. So then it was her and her um, producer, Walter, was on there. And it went from a 30 minute interview to maybe like two hours. It was wow. Awesome. And we were just talking, just like y'all guys, like just talking, yeah. and talking and talking to the point like Walter was like, Yo, I, 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 I just amazed like, like about the whole story. I did not know none of this or whatever. All I saw was like this little picture went viral and this happened and that happened. I didn't know like everything about you or whatever. He said, I did like follow your account a little bit just to, you know, kind of pre-interview you or whatever and stuff like that. But just talking to you, I like your energy. I like your vibe. I like your story. You look like you might be a good fit for this or whatever. So but he said, let me send up to the higher ups or whatever. And you know, see what we could do, but I let you um I gotta let you know we have a lot of more um you know dads to interview or whatever, but you know, we'll let you know if it's like yeah, you're Nick. That's all right, no problem. Thanks for you know contacting me, give me a chance to do the interview and stuff like that. If I when I hear from you, um fast forward maybe like a few weeks or months later, um he hit me back. He was like, I talked to the director, I told her everything, and all she said was go get him. And Wow, As you know, I, I, I was, I was, you know, I was stoked or whatever. So then, fast forward, cause we shot the movie uh, February two thousand nineteen. So right. I, like a lot of people when they see my son, they're like, 
he looks so small. I said, well, like a year and a half ago. So, you know, like he had sure. grown teeth that came out and then teeth were growing back in and stuff like that. He got a little bit taller. But um, I was telling people like um, when Walter came, he said like, hearing me talk on the phone and seeing me in person, it's like the same, you know, you get the same energy, man. And it went sure. from just talking as, you know, you going there to do a job. I'm just going there to record you, interview, then I'm going to roughly friendship. Like I called Walter, I talked to Walter all the time. He just texted me yesterday, talking to him like he's about to come down. And um, That's great. About to, he, he, he about to come down in my area. So he wants to like link on up and hang on out. But from the camera guys to the mic guys, like I'm friends with all of them, man. They, and then to the point where Walter was like, anytime you're in New York, I gave you a key. So, you know, I know you and your son do like acting and modeling. Y'all have like a lot of casting calls up in New York. So, except for paying for a hotel, you know, you just, I got a guest room. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, just after three days of just in my, you know, in my apartment, following us around with cameras everywhere. You know, I'm like, wow, you know, just amazing. He's like, but he's like, I just get that vibe from you. You're cool. You're an awesome person, man. I just love your son. And it just genuinely just happened like that or whatever. And, um, and like I said, fast forward till when the movie came out, and I couldn't wait to tell everybody. And when I said maybe like two or three people knew um, that I wasn't in a movie, but I told them that we were recording something big, and I, I would like to tell y'all. But when it came to like finally like letting the you know the door open or whatever, like oh, I get to tell everybody, everybody was super excited. My friends, family members, they're like, "What?" Jimmy that must Kimball. have been so hard for Chase. <laughs> was oh, it hard? Yeah. For, was it hard for Chase to not tell anyone? Oh, oh well, <laughs> well, all he knew was like the cameras came in, but it's like sometimes he remembers stuff and then he don't. But we saw yeah. Walter a few times since then, you know, um, since January, where he came to see us like a few times while he was in town. We was in New York a few times too, where we um, saw Walter. Then we wound up seeing like the higher ups, like this were behind, like all like, um, not uh, Ron Howard, but like, I forgot the other guy's name, but um, he's up in it top category too with all you know all the celebrities or whatever. And um I went there like um like last year with my son for a casting call. And when I say that everybody gave me like a standing ovation, I'm like, what? Like, oh my <laughs> God, she's here to my like everybody that was behind the scenes of doing the music to the audio to all these type of things that you would never, you know, see or whatever, stuff like that. And this gave me like a stand ovation, like I was a Will Smith or, you know, I was a Kevin Hart. And I'm like, there you go. I'm just, I'm just Robert, you know, in my, in my mind, that's how I of always course. think. And, yeah, but Robert, that's like, all of those guys started from, from, you know, humble beginnings too, my friend. And you're a great guy. And you know you're what, great dad too. you know what, as a celebrity, you know, it's a lot, of, we've seen, we've spoken to quite a few parents on the show and we've spoken to kids is, and you are, you have to remember for your children uh, or for your son, you are a celebrity. You are his everything. So, you know, when people say, oh, I'm not really a celebrity, you are, you know, you've got, you're definitely, you're a celebrity because of your relationship with your son and your relationship with um, his mom and stuff like that. And those, those are the kind of, just because you're, you're not in a movie yet, I'm sure, yeah. you know, did you say that both of you guys are doing modeling? Uh, oh yes. Yeah. We are, uh, we do modeling and acting. Nice. So he, he, he been, yeah, he's been publishing a, um, a few, <clears throat> a few magazines um, as a late, and um, we got another one might be coming up. So we was waiting to hear back from the, um, from the people or whatever. They're going to allow me, want my son or not or whatever. But yes, um, you know, we started last year again. So, you know, we started everything roughly started last year for us. Like us kind of taking a lot of this stuff serious or whatever and stuff. But normally on my platform, I just post a few pictures of him and that'd be it. But last year I started taking this a little bit more serious. Then I'm like, you know what? It's start for us to get on out there and network a little bit more. Yeah. So You never know what, what, what can come of it. Right. Yeah. Listen, Robert, you're, you're a fantastic guy. Like I said earlier, um, love, love the story, you and Chase, the power duo. Um, curious with respect to the journey and so forth, are there any charities that you, uh, you guys support that uh, you'd love for us to kind of share with our followers and our, and our viewers? Uh, no, I don't, we don't, we don't have no charities at, at all or whatever, but I always don't mind like um, at the top of my head, you know, you have, uh, um, the feeding, uh, the feeding to community, and I forgot their their whole um, their whole social media, but I do follow them or whatever. So you got a bunch of feeding to communities, and you got um, CSD communities, but we don't have a charity for say for us that we know we donate and stuff to like that. Okay. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll follow up with you. Um, we'll get some information for you from you, and we'll put it in in the actual show um, to let everybody know about that. So. 
last couple of questions. Uh, what's next for you guys? What's next for you and Chase? Um, the, the sky's the limit, but, you know, I hope to, like, you know, get him in a little bit more, you know, TV stuff, um, a little bit more acting, stuff like that, because, like I said, he's great in front of the camera. He's not shy at all. Um, <laughs> at all, he's not shy or whatever. So hopefully that this movie open up more doors um, that we could, you know, knock down. He just roughly put his condition to the forefront because uh, when the movie came out, a lot of people actually reached out to us as far as like, man, my child has that condition. And just to right. see yeah. they, like one of their childs, somebody they don't know on a, you know, a main you know, stage or on actually a movie or whatever, like, man, they got a heart condition or they got a G2, like, and you can actually see them or whatever. And then I'm actually accessible to where I always reach out to a lot of my fans and followers and stuff like that too. But um, yeah, just to push this narrative as far as um, my, my, my son condition out there a little bit more, let everybody know, like, you know, he could be all right. Because a lot of people like me, when I heard about his situation, I just thought like his life was over. Yeah. But yeah. if you keep putting that energy into it or whatever, you know, the doors open to, you have like a lot of more opportunities and, you know, kids, or stronger than we always think, you know, as a parent, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. like, oh, that's my baby. I wish I could take that pain. <laughs> I wish I could take all this stuff. I could, I wish I could just have it on myself. But kids like, man, dad, mom, I got this. Don't worry about it. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. One, one last question for you here before we wrap up. Uh, usually ask our guests, is there anybody in your circle of influence or within your network that you would want to promote as somebody who's done something extraordinary out of this world? Um, for their community or for their family member like you, if your son, that you think would be great to have on the show? Um, somebody, uh, my, my good friend, um, Glenn, he was, um, he was in the movie, you know, Dads. Yeah. And, you know, if you saw his whole story, how he didn't like his job, left it to where, you know, he just an outstanding person. His platform is amazing and stuff like that. So when I got an email about you, Rob, about, you know, losing your job or whatever, I did the first thing I thought about was like Glenn and I always use him as like my, my energy boost or something like that, because I saw a guy, one thing that didn't like his job, not necessarily got fired, but yeah, you know, like his job, but then transition that to a whole, I call it an empire because that's what he got. Like, you know, yeah. he got from this, he's, he's on commercials. He do all these things or whatever. And to me, even in the movie, a lot of people are like, well, he is a celebrity. So he should have been on the celebrity side. Like, you know, but again, he's a, He's a home dad, so and it is super cool and super dope. So I always, well, I would like to recommend him or whatever. And okay. even like today, right now, I just threw this on, but like this is like one of his shirts that says um, "Love is Magnetic," and it, it it really is because I feel like I understand that y'all reached out to me or whatever, but y'all reached out to me, me, me um to me because of the love that y'all saw to you know to my son, yeah. to my family the energy that we have, just three guys to see yeah. him talking and stuff like that or whatever. Y'all tell me about each one of y'all stories and stuff like that. So if y'all can get anything from Glenn, y'all see like where, you know, one thing ended and it's opened up a door for a, a whole nother opportunity. Cause honestly, I want to, I want to do a podcast. So y'all guys right here, just starting up out of nowhere. It's just like, <laughs> man, I, I might could do it. <laughs> you know what? You know it. what, Robert? You said it earlier on that you know you're friends with all of these people. We we hope that we can be your friends now, moving forward. We stay in touch with you because you you know you're a, you're an inspiration to dads. You know you're an inspiration to with people that feel that they've got challenges in their lives. You know you work hard. You play hard with Chase. Um, you know you got a great relationship with his mom. You know he's getting he's getting by no matter whether you accept it or not. He's getting by because of you. Um, and and your uh, and his mom and you know it's it's we commend you big time for everything that you've done and we want to be and help you in any way we can at all you know if you want to start a podcast then we will help you absolutely and because we know the do's and don'ts yeah <laughs> yeah we know and it's it, it's 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 a challenge but at the same time you just have fun with it and we like to have fun with it we don't edit out anything we just keep it raw and and, and enjoyable you know he tries to make me. A, look bad every now and again in his editing and stuff and puts emojis around my head to embarrass <laughs> me but you know what it's fun so well listen robert again thank you so much for being uh, on the show and uh, we're gonna put we've got all of your social media links down here for you and for chase so and anything we can do let us know and again we'll follow up with you in a little bit hopefully in a few months and see where you guys are at thank you very next much, movie bro. premiere
Oh yeah, yeah. hope so. Now I might be y'all chickens if I had some for y'all. <laughs> We're here to support you, buddy. Thank well, you very much. Man. Thanks, man. Thank you for having me on. Pleasure. All the best. Thank all the you. best. Bye bye. Ooh, Robert, what a crazy guy. On. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Guy. Just yeah. a lot going on, but boy, I tell you what, he's a great dad too. What what a what a story. I mean, I'm you sure know what? Coming from you and me, who are you know number one and two best dads in the world, him Super. closely following us as well. Um, it's up to the viewers to decide who's number one and number two. We don't discuss that. We're, we're, we're joint number one. Um, his story's great. I mean, if you've seen his videos, and I know you have about his little boy, Chase, he's adorable. He's a great little kid. And, you know, he's going to be famous. And his dad's very humble. He just seems very humble, nice guy. And, you know, he just wants to help people. So it's a pleasure talking to people like that, don't you think? Oh, yeah. You can feel the energy from him. And, you know, what I like, too, is when we're watching the videos of his son, you know, having gone through it at such a young age, he looks just like the normal everyday seven-year-old son, just mm-hmm. happy as can be, just living life. And that's the, that's the beauty of this, all of this. It's yeah. now in the past and he's able to move forward and, and be part of playing with kids and feeling that normal life again too. So it's awesome. I loved your, I loved your joke about the uh, six pack to a keg. I was very impressed with you on that one. Coming <laughs> well, out I almost said you, but I figured I'd take that on the chin, but uh, you know. I'm telling you right now, you know, you better, uh, when you get to editing, you better put something in there for yourself this time. because I'm oh, yeah, It'll bit, be a picture of you. I'm a little bit sure. sick and tired of you picking on me the whole time. All of our <laughs> followers and viewers are saying, why'd you pick on Rob the whole time? Oh, it's an easy target, I guess. Yeah, that's true. And you got that. Well, so um, moving on to uh, my favorite jingle. And hold on. Here it comes. Three, two, one. Celebrity guest list. Like, Boom. No, I never get bored of it. Who've, yeah. Who have you got this week, my friend? Well, I, so I did some research. I've been uh, contacting friends and family within mm-hmm. my network and uh, happened to come across a friend who gave me contact to somebody uh, in a high position at the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I know we've talked about it a few times. Yes. I think Justin Bieber was connected to yeah. it. I uh, can't yeah. think of the other ones at this moment, but Look, if we can bring somebody on um, and share oh. everything about that that foundation, let's do that. Let's let's oh, spread the that, word. That would be amazing. The Make a Wish Foundation is huge, and you know, look at the end of the day, guys. When we're doing this celebrity guest list, are they going to come on the show? You never know. It's the same thing. You know, we said to Robert, and you know, we do with all of our guests. We we send a message, we send an email, we try and get them on the show, and if they come, they come. If they don't, they don't. So, you know, we're not giving up on this, and uh, we're getting some traction. We appreciate all of. Uh, your support and make sure yep. you like and subscribe and hit the bell. I've told you enough times now. I shouldn't have to repeat myself. All right. Well, let's play that, uh, that there it goes. exit Here it comes. music. Let's go. All right. So next week, got some, again, look, you know, it's getting t- better by the week. It's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, we appreciate you letting us have a week off. So are you ready to go? You sign out first. Ready. Go on, you go right. first this time. Why not have a jingle? So it's Jayhawk. I'm signing off. All right. And it's Robson. One, two, three, ABC. You know me. See you later. Thanks, guys. Take care. Hey, you fall forward fanatics. Jay Hawk here. And Rob C. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And also check out our website, fallforwardradio.com and the suggest a guest section. And always remember to keep inspiring and keep falling forward. See See you guys soon. soon.